Yo, what's up, guys? The Insane Gang Freak here, here to bring you my teen romantic comedy snafu season two episode teen. Yeah, that's what I meant to do. That's gonna look like reverse from your perspective. Yeah, I did it. I did it. All right, anyways. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about this episode. Now, a lot of people said this episode is rushed. From what I understand, the light novel readers specifically are like, this is a super rushed episode. And to anime-only watchers, it does seem rushed in a lot of aspects. <laughs> because snafu has been kind of a weird series where it sometimes will tra <laughs> transition from, like, one scene directly into the next, which is exactly what it did at the beginning of this episode. And then it'll have moments where it transitions, like, a day or two. Maybe a week or two, depending on usually if it's like the summer or some type of break. So, but it is, it, it seems rushed to both aspects, but it doesn't seem as rushed as people made it seem like it does. For example, uh, when the episode starts, you get the whole thing with the Christmas stuff and Ishiki and Hayama, and then you keep going to the Christmas stuff with Mr. Jazz Hands and Yukino and Yui and the actual event itself. Uh, also, for you, Saki Saki. Okay. I want to go Saki Saki. <laughs> for all you Saki Saki fans, they do show her and her little sister. Uh, although, for those who watched the anime, that was supposed to have its own scene, her introduction. Like, she actually does talk and she interacts with Hachiman. That's not in the anime episode, obviously. That's not even in the anime in general. Saki Saki lovers have been cheated. Have been cheated as, as a whole for the whole goddamn season. Both seasons, to be honest with you, have been cheated on their shipping of Hachiman X Saki. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my lord. But uh, you, you go from that scene, and then you, you go after that, you go like into the nice, sweet scene about the girls buying him his own personal cup. And then you go into the New Year's scene, which a lot of people said. That, the New Year's thing, you know, the one where they're, like, clapping their hands and praying for a new year, which makes sense in the context of, like, an anime you're watching because it's, like, it's, like, fun. It's, like, the Christmas stuff ends and then you go directly into New Year's. But a lot of people were saying that apparently the New Year's scene has a lot more shit to it that they just completely skipped. Actually, almost, I think even the, the section where they did the song from the first season, that is from, uh, there's, a, there's actually a lot of stuff there, too. So, apparently, we're missing a lot of stuff. But, uh, personally, it doesn't really feel like it because, and all the stuff that we're probably missing from my, and I don't know specifically, because, as I said, right after the whole genuine thing is when I kind of didn't, like, go full on what's going on, especially because this goes into Volume 10 stuff, and I have not looked at Volume 10 at all. I just know Volume 10 has a heavy emphasis on Harano, uh, which we kind of see near the end of this episode. Uh, I don't know what's coming next, but looking, I, I, I like, because the beginning of the episode, you have the Ishiki stuff, which people, the Aroha shipping war, the Aroha is, is Aroha has joined the fray. Uh, I do like her development. If anything, I like the fact that this episode really did show how much she's changed as a character. After hearing Hachiman's thing, she's become a lot more comfortable in her own skin, and she's willing to admit things, which is why she confessed to Hayama. That's what she told Hachiman. And then after that, you see she's kind of become her own person and a lot more defiant and is willing to do what she wants to do because she's not having her name attached to some bullshit. <laughs> so I, I, I've grown to like Iroha. Komachi is the best little sister. 10 out of 10. Mashiro, run. She's coming on your ass like fucking fire, bruh. <laughs> I also do like, and you can also see how much uh, Yuki Nosa has changed just through these two episodes. Like, she's a lot more expressive, she's a lot more open, and she feels a lot more comfortable around them. Uh, especially that shit with Komachi, where she's like, you idiot, dimwit, Hachiman. <laughs> and, and you're like, and he's like, Hachiman isn't an insult. And then you turn around, you can know she's laughing, and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? And she's like, dimwit, nunskull, Hachiman. <laughs> And then, and then Hiki Guy's response is like, well, his internal monologue is like, I guess the, the, uh, the insult dictionary of Yuki Nostra just got updated in a long while. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I'm 
So she's become a lot more expressive. I, I found Yuki Nosha absolutely adorable. Um, although I will tell you about a scene apparently that the light that people were saying in the forums that the anime skipped when they're looking for Yuki Nosha's birthday present. And I'm only gonna mention it because it's a parody scene, and that one pisses me off because of the hilariousness of it. So you know the scene where you see Yui try on glasses and she says that thing about like uh does this make me look smart? And he's like, well, the fact that you think glasses make you look smart is pretty stupid. And you see him look over and look at the glasses on the shelf. Apparently, that leads into a persona reference. Yeah, I am very fucking disappointed that wasn't animated. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, actually, and that's another thing that, that has a montage that technically should be like fully it has actual stuff in it apparently people said that was like yui's last like really really cute sequence and they did a montage for it which i'm perfectly fine with because if anything i will say you was always to me has been way more in the forefront than yuki nosha has and that's primarily because yuki nosha isn't like yuki nosha's forefrontness isn't as apparent because she's not outspoken yui has always seemed like she was ahead in the shipping wars of, in terms of the anime because yui talks and she she goes through the effort of, you know, speaking up for uh, everyone. So, I'm, I don't really have a problem with... I mean, I, my Yui fanboy wants to see the scene fully animated and for them to do, like, the full thing. At the same time, I'm like... Yuki knows to kind of need some focus. I, I don't have a problem with them putting more e emphasis on her. Which, you know, her grabbing him by the, the, the collar of his shirt and the train. Her being more, you know, emotionally openly emotional like the whole laughing thing about the Hachiman joke and then at the end that was an adorable moment even though the situation was awkward so Yuki Nostra's mother you can tell there's some shit there because there seems to be shit with all of her family members it looks like um apparently <laughs> in the scene I'm referring to is that like at the very end of it where she wants to say something and then her sister's like don't do it and then you had the scene where she looked so distressed and she looked over the Hachiman like, help me. And you're like, no! <laughs> Yuki, no! <laughs> I was like, I saw that show, I was like, no! <laughs> Hachiman, do something! <laughs> Take out the mask! Do something to me! Yuki, no! <laughs> And then that, that was like one of the best scenes. I thought like that was a good representation of Snafu as a whole. Because the scene is literally like that, that that last scene is literally told through facial expressions and looks. And you can read the entire atmosphere. Apparently, the mother, from what I understand, the light novel makes it more clear that the mother is super light like, distant and does not have no fucks to give about Yuki Noshita. I mean, it's kind of referenced in the episode, like when she goes friends and Harano's like those are Yuki Nosha's friends he's like oh well, I've only met Hayato so I didn't know like that's supposed to come out more dickish than what it comes off as like she doesn't seem that bad so far but when I heard she's like terrible she like people were saying she's the final boss <laughs> but that scene I was referring to like you see you see you see Yuki Nosha look down and then she wants to say something and then Harano's like don't and then she looks at the Hachiman Hachiman's like, God damn it. And then she, and you see Hayato over here with this kind of eh face. And then Hachiman's like, what the fuck? In his eyes, he's just like, what the fuck was that? He's like, hey, man, I told you I wasn't a nice guy. He's like, son of a bitch. And he looks away. That entire scene, I got all of that just out of looks for the most part. Almost all that was looks. That is the beauty of Snafu, ladies and gentlemen. You can fucking display so much just in looks and shit. But that, that was fucking ridiculous. Cause, and I think this episode, and based on the preview, I think Hayato needs some development too. Because this nigga, he keeps this shit up. This whole thing about, I'm not as nice of a guy as you think I am. And I, you know what I really kind of thought about? I think Hayato's true problem, personally is, is that he knows he's not a nice guy. But he gained that reputation because of basic things he did. And... I think he wants Hikigaya to break him down. But at the same time, I think he hates Hikigaya for that. He doesn't like the fact that Hikigaya's way gets results. 
at the same time, he understands that he himself is a walking contradiction. And he wants to be broken down. He wants to be seen through. But it pisses him off at the same time for that to be the case. Uh, every time he keeps saying, you know, the only reason why I'm praising you is for my own sake. He's trying to put Hikigai on his level so he doesn't feel like shit when Hikigai bests him. But that's not what it is. He thinks he's above Hikigai. And in some instances, I believe he really wants Hikigai to tear him the fuck down. And as someone who is kind of gone in and out with Hayato, I think Hayato makes for an interesting character dynamic for Hikigaya because they're so similar and different. They both kind of put on their own different masks. But I like Hayato's because Hayato represents a, a character type that doesn't usually get represented. The nice guy who isn't as nice as people say they, it, he is, but doesn't know how to get out of that mold. Because he wants to be normalized, but to do that, he has to be the bad guy, which is something he isn't willing to do and doesn't want to do. And Hikigai is willing to do it, and it pisses him off that Hikigai does it and gonna get away with it. But at the same time, it like it, it's very fucking confusing, but I, I really do like the interactions between Hayama and uh, Hikigaya. I guess the other thing to talk about is that last line when you see uh, Yuki Noshita kind of tear up jazz hands I love how both of her and Hachiman's statements in that scene are literally just kind of recapping what they've truly learned over the course of this current arc because the both of their di both of their dialogues are like fucking retrospectives it's like you won't change anything by just saying empty words and promises and coming up with fake BS terms if you don't say it clearly and make a and and aren't willing to disagree and argue, then you ain't you ain't getting anywhere. And be perfectly honest, stop wasting my motherfucking time. And I was like, yo, ah, uh, I like the episode first. I like the episode. <laughs> but uh, also, you eat with glasses can get it. He wrote highs like a little bit higher on my list. Kamachi's. Almost everybody has gone up this season. I haven't had anyone I've, I've hated more. Hayama was kind of like low tier because he's kind of an asshole. But he, I, I kind of like him because of the dynamic. I, don't, I think he's one of those I think he's like what Miura was for J-Man and Bakuman. J-Man liked Miura because of what Miura ended. Not Miura, fucking Nakai. What Nakai was. Cause Nakai was kind of a problem. And uh, you like him because of the problems he creates. That's kind of how I feel about Hayama. I like Hayama because of the problems he creates. Not necessarily as much as a character, but at the same time, you kind of have to like him as a character if you like the problems he creates of, because of his character. Uh, I'm curious to see how much we're going to delve into Haruno and Yuki Noshita and her mother, because I heard there's a decent chunk revolving those characters. And I need Hayama, I want Hayama to be truly honest about himself, because he's fucking killing me right now. It's like, dude, you're doing so hard to be like, I'm I'm not a nice guy. And I'm like, dude, just stop it. Fucking stop it. Just fucking come out with it. You keep playing this fucking game like, oh, I'm okay, but I will dick you over, but I'm just doing it to prove my point. And I'm like, so you're asking me for me to fuck you up like verbally. Like I know I know eventually Hayama and Hikigai are gonna get into a fight. And that would be the most legit shit when it happens. But, like, that's what, I feel like that's what he's doing. He's he's trying to get that damn reaction because he wants someone to tear him out. He needs, he, he's looking for an excuse. It's like what Hikigai said a few episodes back. Some people won't change unless they get, they're given a reason. Ayama needs to be teared the fuck open, teared the fuck apart before he's willing to do something about it. So right now, he's just fucking throwing out these dumbass hints that he's not a nice guy by putting them in the situations that aren't fucking appealing. You fucker. <laughs> but uh, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. This has been the Voss Game from your boy Terrell. And I'll catch you guys. Peace.